and welcome to Northeast Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I bring you a breaking story at this point in time on how the center wants to go ahead in bringing about a solution to the long-standing Naga problem. Before that, let's take a look at the stance of the armed groups which are currently on a ceasefire. The NSC and IM wants a solution on the basis of the 3rd August 2015 framework agreement. The NNPGs is looking for a solution based on the agreed position it signed with the government of India in November 2017. NSC and Nikki Sumi group has agreed to go with whatever is accepted by the Naga people and the NSCN Congo Konyak faction has a separate stand. What New Delhi is bent on achieving is one single solution to the entire Naga issue with the participation of all stakeholders, including the Nagaland government and all the armed groups on ceasefire, irrespective of whether they are engaged in peace talks with the government or not. And take note, viewers, this single solution is supposed to address the issues of Nagas everywhere, whether in Nagaland or in the adjoining areas. What New Delhi is thinking is not necessarily integration of areas where Nagas are leaving, but addressing of their issues. Things looked positive when, on the 14th of January 2023, the NNPGs and the NSCNIM signed a declaration titled Nagas are moving forward, wherein the two groups declared their unconditional commitment to collaborate on the basis of their respective agreements with immediate effect for the resolution of the Naga historical and political rights with the government of India. They also appealed to the Naga people to stand with them to prevent any further division of their shared belonging. This declaration was endorsed by as many as 11 important Naga civil society groups who congratulated the NNPGs and the NSCNIM for their unconditional commitment to collaborate with each other to bring about a solution. But the big question now is, has the NSCNIM gone back on this commitment? We have seen statements in recent weeks of the two groups trading charges against each other and talking in a language that indicates that all is not well again. In this backdrop, what is the way forward as to achieve an acceptable and honorable solution to the Naga problem? What are the expectations of the common Naga people? The government of India wants to bring about a common formulation towards the solution by going beyond the framework agreement of the NSCNIM and the agreed position of the NNPGs. Is this possible? Let us debate. Joining me tonight is Reverend Dr. Wati Iyer, convener of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation that brought about the two sides together to come up with the joint declaration on working unitedly. With me is Dr. Ellen Konyak Jamir, Associate Professor at Oriental Theological Seminary and also a member of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation. Joining me as well is Mr. Teza Terry, leader of the Naga Tribes Council. And I also have with me Mr. K.K. Sema, former IAS officer and a well-known commentator. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to North East tonight. Let me begin by going first to you, Dr. Wati Ayer. Uh, you are the convener of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation, a highly respected uh, body in Nagaland. The entire Nagas respect the Nagas, the Forum for Naga Reconciliation. And you had been taking a very active role, uh, Reverend Wati Ayer, uh, at the initiative of the FNR. Uh, it was possible for the two sides, that is the NNPGs and the NSC and I am to sit together face to face and come up with this joint declaration, joint declaration 
of uh, joint declaration of 14th of January uh, 2023. This declaration was signed by Mr. Q Tuku, the chairman of the NSCN IM, and Mr. Kitovi Zimomi, the convener of the NNPGs. Uh, now, my question to you, uh, Dr. Wati Iyer, uh, you know, let me show a few documents that I have. This is the endorsement to the deal by the 11 Naga organizations, the 11 Naga civil society organizations, all respected organizations have supported uh, this initiative and they have congratulated the two organizations. Some of these organizations are the TPO, CNTC, FNGA, NGBF, NTC, Naga Sisa Ho Ho, NPMHR, Naga Ho Ho, GNF, NKA. So these are all these organizations supported. But now, Dr. Wati Iyer, we have seen statements and counter statements from the NNPGs and the NSCNIM. Now, are we to understand that things have gone wrong, there is misunderstanding once again? I couldn't get your last sentence, but let me say this. The declaration that came out out of the 14th January 2023 was debated at length by both the groups. It was not just um, an arbitrary decision from one side. So you have to take it. Naga Public will have to take it that this was an intentional agreement among them. We have, we have not given chance yet. Uh, after the signing, uh, the process will have to uh, follow suit. i like to add here that um, we need to talk about uh, what I call it the political fitting forms in the Naga context. Uh, without, without what I call it, the political fitting forms, a vacuum is created. And when a vacuum is created, there is always the possibility of a turbulence. And once the turbulence comes, people become very emotional, people become somewhat irrational and reactive as well. So, in our, in our kind of a context, uh, because of our unique cultural belongings, or should I say, the, the Naga context is so unique, therefore I call it cultural groupings. And we've got lands, you call it territories. So you see, I think what, what is happening in the Naga context is we are trying to portion we are portioning by ourselves. And at somewhere along the line, portioning may not necessarily be a bad idea. But we are missing the point, I think. We have to look at from the centripetal force, meaning to say, let us come together, meaning well, we are talking about the fitting forms out there. We have to come back to the essence of the Naga historical political rights. And with that, that's why the, the, the statement, the document was signed yeah. in, that, yes. that, in that context. Yes. Therefore, but now, let me just finish. What I'm trying to say is that uh, let us give the, the chance, possibility of different arrangements emerging leave it to the future. But let us not look, let us not try to start from the periphery. Right. Let us start from the center pedal and go to the periphery. That's my, or that's the position of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation. Yes. Now, now, now uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Wati. Uh, let me get the opening remarks from all the four panelists before we go into the uh, debate. Uh, now, now, 
Uh, let me go to Mr. Teza Terry. Mr. Teza Terry, yes, as Dr. Wati Iyer said, the whole idea behind this statement was to, you know, give peace a chance. Uh, you know, keep your respective things uh, aside for a moment, give peace a chance, and work, work on things because this is going to be an evolving process. Now, point is, uh, for within six months, on 25th of June, the NNPGs came up with a statement. You know, the NSC and IM gave out a statement. It's not an official statement. NSC and IM later said that there was a statement by Mr. R.S. Raising, one of the senior leaders of the NSC and IM, uh, and that was, of course, denied by the NSC and IM as saying that it was his personal statement. But in any case, the NNPGs decided to uh, comment on the statement. They gave out a long statement on the 25th of June. Basically, uh, they are saying that uh, they are trying to make a differentiation between the Naga leaders from Nagaland and from Manipur. They are saying that uh, they have no rights to their land, issue of land, people, ownership, resources, and transplanting population from, from Manipur to Nagaland. A person or person from Manipur cannot and has no right to lecture on the political future of Nagaland. So these are strong words given by the NNPGs. Now, three days later, on 28th of June, the NSC and I am issued a counter to this. They are saying that the NNPGs have, may have lost control of their own struggle, and they said that if they find the load of national struggle too heavy, they are free to exit. Now, these are very strong statements. Now, what has gone wrong? Do you think uh, the January 14, 2040, 2023 statement uh, has been overshadowed by these kind of allegations and counter allegations that we have seen? Mr. Terry. Yeah, Mr. Wasbeer, both NPGs and the uh, NSC and IM they are expected to stand by their commitment and to work together. After all, there can be only one solution for entire Nagas. And all these nitty gritties, misunderstanding can be resolved. There's nothing which cannot be resolved and it should not be a roadblock to our political process or for a solution. But apparently, government of India seems to have no clear roadmap. Peace process, which was initially taken off in a mission mode, with a dedicated interlocutor appointed by PMO, and under which the Reunion two entities could reach a very good level of understanding. The atmosphere was conducive to sign a mutual agreement for peaceful coexistence in 2019. But apparently, government of India failed to prioritize the oldest and the longest political struggle and have engaged with everyone everywhere in the region. And at the moment, we could not see any decisive and committed engagement. The present engagement with IM and NPGs are just a routine talk. And this kind of routine talk cannot go on forever. We expect our negotiator, both IM and NPGs, right. to remain committed, to be practical, and to bring out a decisive action through negotiation. And they should be willing to sacrifice, willing to give, willing to take. And right. they, they, okay. they must that, bring this logical uh, talk Ab into a logical conclusion. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, these are strong points. But uh, Mr. K.K. Sema, I'm coming to you, uh, Dr. Ellen Jamir, uh, in a minute. Dr. Uh, Mr. K.K. Sema, when Mr. Teza Terry is saying that the government of India has no clear roadmap, now the point is uh, there was an agreement between the two groups at the intervention of well-meaning people, well-meaning organizations like the FNR and endorsed by 11 important civil society groups including Mr. Teza Terry's group. 
Now the point is, now these two groups are indulging in allegations and counter allegations. NNPG is saying that, uh, you know, the leaders from Manipur, they have no right to lecture on the political future of Nagaland. At the end of the day, they are all Nagas. But, uh, and, and, but now, okay, it is easy to blame government of India. Now the point is, uh, don't you think that the two groups actually first needed to hold on to their commitments? Do you think this is unnecessarily creating a roadblock? What are the internal politics? We don't know. Well, um, in as far as the efforts made by FNR is concerned, I believe it's a very noteworthy effort that they have made to bring the two different factions together to find a common platform in which to uh, carry on with the uh, political solutions as it were. Now the point here is there has to be an equivalent effort made in order to bring the two groups on the same table because the NNPGs have their set clauses of issues that they have agreed with the government of India and they have made that public. Now, NSC and I, unfortunately, have a lot of uh, issues within their competency clauses, which they are not revealing to the people at all. The stakeholders do not know anything as to what are the competency clauses, the issues that they are asked to go to India. The only thing that has been made public is on the issue of the flag and constitution. They want to declare Nagaland as a Naga nation. Right. And they want to have Pan Naga Hoho to control the political system in the post solution uh, scenario. Now, these are very serious differences between even the two groups. And there can only be some kind of a solution when the two groups are brought together on the same table. Absolutely. After agreeing to work with one another, the most difficult aspect of the exercise that needs to be completed is to bring the two different groups together so that the differences of issues that they have with the government of India has to be ironed out between the factions themselves. Yes, now, absolutely. There is no exercise whatsoever. Absolutely. To bring the two groups together I on will, the same platform. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Sema. The issue. Mr. Sema, I, 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 yes, very valid point you have made. I'll come back to all of you. Uh, let me go to Dr. Ellen Jamir. Dr. Ellen Jamir, uh, you know. You see, as K.K. Sama uh, has rightly said that, you know, the two groups need to sit together face to face. They have certain di differences in approach. That has to be resolved because the, the breaking story is that the government of India has made it absolutely clear that there will be just one solution with all the stakeholders, whether it is NSC and IM, whether it is NNPGs, whether it is Nikki Sumi group, whether it is Kango Konya group, as well as the government of Nagaland, which is a body of elected representatives by the Naga people, the government of India wants one solution. And this solution is going to address the concerns of Nagas, not just in Nagaland, but in the neighborhood. That has been made very clear. Our, our, our sources have made it very clear to us that this is the thinking of the government of India. For that, the two major groups, that is the NSC and IM and the NNPGs, have to resolve the differences. That exactly is what the FNR had done. They have, uh, what everybody thought was impossible, the FNR demonstrated that they had done it. That 14 January 2023 agreement, 
uh, and uh, that, that, that was perhaps in Dimapur. There was a previous sitting in Calcutta. Now, uh, when everybody thought that the stage is set for the two groups to meet face to face across the table, now we have seen these statements and counter statements, very strong words. What, how do you see this, uh, Dr. Ellen? Thank you, Mr. Hussein. Um, it takes a lot of effort, you know, uh, to bring people together. And in my experience working as an FNR member this couple of years, uh, I thought that we did a pretty significant thing. Uh, it's not just the FNR. I'm aware that it's the efforts of many Naga civil societies, churches. Many people have been, uh, you know, trying to bring these groups together. And so uh, it was a hopeful moment for us when they came together. Uh, but when I think about our Naga story and our Naga narrative, uh, I like to take an, take, uh, think of a metaphor. It's a metaphor of a dysfunctional family. <laughs> you know, a dysfunctional family where all the members, we consider ourselves as members of the same family, we're interconnected. However, uh, our relationship with one another is, uh, is quite fragmented. And so it, it, for a family to keep going or, or the family to be functional, uh, there needs to be proper communication at all times. And so even with our groups here that we're talking about, uh, there, it's, it's not just a one-time thing. It is a process. It's not just a one-time coming together, sitting around the table and making these decisions. But it needs follow-up. You know, we need to be committed, all of us, all the parties involved, uh, the, the two groups as well as the people supporting, the Naga people as a whole, and uh, all of us, we need to be uh, committed to this process. It is an unfolding process. Yeah. Right. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, very, very uh, important point which is described with a metaphor by Dr. Ellen. Uh, let me go back once again to Dr. Watiyar. Uh, Dr. Watiyar, actually tonight we are debating a news break and that news break, uh, our whole discussion is based on a breaking story that we have just uh, broken, that the government of India has made it clear that there is going to be one solution. Everybody has to sit across the table and sign on the dotted lines together. It will be one piece of agreement. Uh, and that agreement is going to address the concerns of Nagas in the entire neighborhood. Uh, now, do you think that is still possible? Okay. Uh, I, I, I have lost that line with uh, uh, Dr. Wati Ayer. Uh, we will we'll get that line back soon. Uh, let, me, let me take that to Mr. Teza Terry. Uh, Mr. Uh, Teza, you know, uh, see, one solution. For that, at least the, all the stakeholders will have to sit together. That is the first priority, which the FNR had achieved. But before a formal dialogue could take place with the government of India, the differences have cropped up once again. Are you a worried man? Yeah. Yeah. Every Naga today, we are worried. If the two groups are negotiating on behalf of the people, I don't see any reason as to why they cannot come together. They cannot take people for a ride. Right. When they can come together, when FNR invite them. We appreciate the effort of the FNR. The entire Naga population desires that they come together and they could come together, they have signed a commitment and they cannot go back from that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Wati. I think this negotiator, they owe some explanation to the people. Yes, yes. These are, these are very, very uh, clear cut statement by Teza Terry that if they have signed a commitment, they cannot go back. And they have to owe an explanation to the Naga people. Dr. Watier, how do you look at it? Because everybody thought the government of India, government of India has made it clear there will be one solution. And that solution is going to address the concerns of the Naga people, not just in Nagaland, but in the entire neighborhood. That has been made clear by the government of India. Now, 
you brought these two sides together at least to sign a commitment and this commitment was further widened with the endorsement it received from 11 Naga civil society groups. Now, now do you think, uh, you know, there is a hiccup? Do you think there is a roadblock? And how do you propose to remove this roadblock? In our 15 years of um, the work, the, 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 the existence of the Forum for Naga Reconciliation completed 15 years just a few days ago. Uh, we have we have much experiences of such kind. We will take a step forward, and the next day we go three steps backward. Yeah. But we have always been able to transcend those difficult times, and I believe that this is something. This is this this what is happening right now is not all hopeless. I look at us. A challenge for us, and we are in the process. We are continuing to talk with people, with the with the stakeholders, and since uh, the people are thinking people, at the end of the day, we will have to be gracious to one another. We need to be much more generous, and I'm hopeful that this is going to take place very soon. Absolutely. On that hopeful note, I'll go for a short break. Don't go away. I'll be right back and go straight to uh, Dr. Ellen Jamir and Mr. K.K. Sema to get to further take the debate forward. Welcome back. Let me go straight to Dr. Ilan Jamir. Uh, uh, Dr. Ilan, you know, basically now what Teza Terry had said that, you know, you have signed a commitment, you cannot go back, and you have to owe an explanation. You owe an explanation to the people of Nagaland, to, 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 sorry, not to the people of Nagaland, to the Nagas. Let to, that'll be the correct word. Uh, you owe an explanation to the Nagas. Now, 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 okay, government of India comes later. First, you have to come, we speak in one voice as to what you want, what you demand, and how, what is the maximum that you can go to achieve a respectable, honorable, and acceptable solution. Isn't that the, isn't that, can't we expect that at least? Dr. Alan Jamir? Ellen, can you hear me? Ellen? Okay, Ellen can't hear me. Uh, let me let me take that question to uh, Mr. KK Sema. Mr. KK Sema, uh, you know, you know, when the government of India will come a little later. First of all, is it not right to expect the Naga stakeholders to speak in one voice before you you get the get to the position where you are about to sign the accord? Well, the natural process should be that we should be able to iron out the differences within our kitchen first and take it forward with the government of India where a consolidated intent is placed on the table. Now, that is not happening. And uh, what FNR has done is the preliminary requirement to make them mentally prepared yes. to come together to find that common ground that they can take forward to the government of India. So that's one perspective. Now, the other part of it is, you see, the government of India wants or one solution for all the Nagas but at this particular point in time, 
they have been only talking to one group or the other on different, different situations, but they have never brought all the contending parties together on a common table because the differences among the factions are really diverse and there's got to be somebody who should mediate in order to let the two groups see what the government of India is capable of conceding and what the government of India is not going to be able to concede. Correct. Now, that exercise has never taken place. Yes. So, you're expecting the people to organize FNR. It's a doing their best, being some kind of flexibility in this confusion. And they have done their part of trying these factions. Absolutely, absolutely. In order to make them absolutely. decide on issues that need to be solved, the government of India needs to a more concrete lead in bringing all the factions together. Yes. And start talking to them, otherwise they're going to be a solution. Right, right. And so... Now, now Dr. Uh, Dr. Watiyar, uh, you know, unless, do you agree, do you agree that unless the two, two main groups, the NSC and IM and the NNPGs sit together with the government of India, <laughs> a solution is never going to come. Now that the government of India has said in no uncertain terms that there will be only one agreement that will be signed because they, obviously there cannot be an agreement, one agreement with NSCN, one agreement with NNPGs, one agreement with Nikki Sumi group, one with Kango Konya group. It, that is not possible. There has to be one agreement that addresses the issue. So, so do, you, do you agree that talks will go nowhere unless the two sides sit together with the government of India? Yes, uh, that's what I've been saying earlier. That uh, you know, we are we are making we are making ourselves we are we are enclosing us ourselves in a very very uh, hopeless uh, situation. Uh, I think at this moment within, we have no one to be to blame except ourselves. We are we are making things difficult. And while we are making things difficult within us, we are making it easier for the others. So Nagas must understand that we will have to sit together. And I said, the sitting together is the beginning. We have been trying to portion ourselves from, from the periphery, as I said earlier, from without. Let us come, because once we come, the possibility of um, Imagining what is possible, what is not possible, will take place. And at the same time, we are also going to, uh, I also feel that at some point, the Naga public uh, democratically mandated will have to come. The Naga public will have to speak out. Sometimes, uh, our Naga political groups may not be at ease to speak certain things. We will have to speak. And so that, that process will, will, will come one day. We are very hopeful of that process. Now, now, now you see the two groups, uh, two groups uh, seem to be brazening it out. They are trying to brazen it out. Uh, now, this cannot go on forever. 27 years of negotiations, uh, you know, uh, this cannot go on forever. This is what uh, Misa, Mr. Tezar Terry has been saying on my show from the last two, three years that, uh, you know, this, this dialogue cannot go on forever. All the stakeholders have to sit together. Uh, now the point is, point is, po po point is, uh, later on, we are now talking, at least some of the groups are saying that, oh, Nagas leaders from Manipur, Nagas from Manipur have no right to talk about the future of Nagas in Nagaland. If we, if we go to this level now, after 27 years of discussions with the government of India, we, uh, don't you think that the Naga issue will be back to square one? There will be absolutely no progress, uh, Dr. Watiyar. It's a difficult one. 
uh, you know, situations, uh, situation pops up um, all of a sudden, and I was referring to the turbulence. And when such thing comes, I think each cultural grouping should be honest to look at and make an analysis. Right, right. Uh, we are, we, we have always justified. We have answers for everything. Everyone is wrong except I. That kind of a attitude mindset must yeah. go. Yeah, uh, Dr. Ellen, uh, you know, time for introspection among the Naga people appears to have come. This is what I understand from what uh, Dr. Wati Iyer, from what Mr. Teza Terry, what Mr. K.K. Sama is saying, that this cannot go, time for introspection uh, it has come. And But but unfortunately, we have seen, we have heard from the uh, stakeholders, we have heard from the civil society groups, but in the entire discourse, the common Naga people, that voice seems to be absent, unless you argue and say that, no, no, the voice of the civil society is the voice of the ordinary Nagas. But ordinary Nagas usually have not spoken out. <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, that, that's, a, that's an important uh, um, thing to mention that you're mentioning. I think it's important for all of us. Um, you know, in our culture, it, the young people, they look up to the elders. Um, uh, we are usually, the younger people, our voices are not heard. We're not included in the decision making. But I think it's about time now that all of us, uh, irrespective of our gender or age, you know, or tribes, we need to all come together and engage in this process. It is a people's process. And so um, there are many young people, I think, asking, questioning our leaders, why is it so difficult? Why is, it, uh, why is this, uh, this process so difficult? Why is it so difficult to reason together? And there's a lot of uh, angst and frustration among our, the common people. And I, as a common uh, Naga, I, I just want to say this, that I think it's about time that uh, we look past our differences. Everybody, and especially those people who are engaged in this process. I think um, we, have, we have issues of past differences or past traumas or, uh, you know, unresolved issues, internalized issues that has not... Uh, been addressed properly. And for that to happen, I think Naga people need to be more engaging. We need to be more open to one another. We need to come together more often. Right, right. And we, we, can't, we can't wait for just FNR or, you know, the Naga Hoho or NMA to do that. I think we all need to take uh, responsibility for this. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, now let me go once again to Mr. Teza Terry. Uh, Mr. Teza Terry, you know, uh, you you are one of the few who have been saying that there has to be a deadline. This cannot go on like this forever. And now the now the latest thinking in the government of India is that uh, they want one solution, as I have been saying. Uh, they are saying that irrespective of those groups who are having talks with the government or not. There are certain groups like the Ong Ong faction, somebody wants to come inside, uh, they want to, uh, you know, uh, there are, there is a, uh, I Indian Nagas who wants to come back. This is what we have reported some time ago on our channel. If that is true, uh, because I don't know whether that is true, but we had to rely on our reliable sources, we carried a story. If that is true, but that group, that faction is not in talks. Now, what the government of India is saying, irrespective of whoever is in talks with us or not, all the armed groups, they will, have to be ex they will have to be signatories to one accord. They cannot say after five years that, no, no, we are not part of this. We want something new. So that the government of India has made at least that very clear. Now, my point is, my question to you is, in this backdrop, see, the, the Naga people always refer to the referendum 
uh, where, you know, referendum where 99.9% .9 of the Nagas uh, are said to have voted for one decision. Now the point is, do you think a time has come for some kind of a consensus among the Naga people to reason with the stakeholders that no, you have to remove, you have to reach a common point. I'm not saying that you accept a dishonorable solution. You, it has to be an acceptable solution. There is no debate on that. But it cannot go on forever. So any negotiation, we all know, involves a give and take. It cannot be just give or it cannot be just take. I think we are all agreeable to that. We, that is why there is a negotiation. Now, do you think there should be a consensus? I won't use the word referendum among the Nagas to say that these two groups or three groups or four groups, it's high time that they need to sit together with the government of India. Yeah, Ms. Wasbir, I feel ashamed as a Naga that today we could not come together and come out with a common front. There's lots of trust deficit and we fail to come together and we could not develop trust on each other. I agree with my co-panelist. We should be able to iron out our differences and approach the government of India in one common front. But that is not working at the moment. Whatever it may be, when the peace process started, there was never a condition from the government of India. When the government of India invited the NNPGs, when the government of India invited NNC and IM, there was never a condition that you have to merge together, you have to come together and come as a group. Government of India also promised that they will bring out a common draft which is agreeable. After all these years of negotiation, government of India clearly knows the party's concern, what is their concern, what is their demand, what is their point of view. And government of India assured that we will bring out a common draft. And we, we are yet to see that. Any peace process, it has to be decisive. It has to be committed. There has to be a deadline. And it has to be brought to the logical conclusion. Right. If it fails to work, right. then it cannot no. be kept alive forever. Right, right. And the people no. should be given a chance to take you a call. Uh, Mr. K.K. Sema, as a young reporter, 27 to 30, 35 years ago, I was reporting on the Naga issue. And today, uh, after maturing over the years, I am debating on the Naga issue. Earlier, I was reporting on the Naga issue. Now, I am debating on the Naga issue. Now, the point is, uh, uh, are, you, are you there? Is, is Mr. Sema there? OK, I, I, I've missed that connection with Mr. Uh, K.K. Sema. Uh, let me, let me, I can see uh, Dr. Dr. L. Doc, Dr. Ellen there. Uh, Dr. Ellen, uh, uh, you know, you've heard that. Uh, when I was saying that I was, as a young reporter, I was reporting, and now as an editor, I'm debating on this issue. Now, the, po the question that I'm posing to you is that, you know, basically, what is your prescription? What is the road ahead? Uh, what prescription would you like to give? Well, I think I, I agree with what uh, Mr. Theri just said. That this process has to be decisive, it has to be logical, it has to have a purpose, and we just cannot drag on, you know? And um, I, 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 I got, I mean, I am aware that the process is going on for such a long time. You know, I heard it when I was a kid, and now I'm also surprised that I'm sitting here talking about this <laughs> and debating about our Naga issues. How long will this go on? Uh, so I think, for me, my hope as a member of FNR and as a common Naga is that um, as we as we negotiate with uh, uh, you know with with uh, mm, others or with um, with a big power, let's say, 
even Nagas ourselves, and I brought in the metaphor of the uh, family earlier, it's because families need to work together. You know, it's about relationships, it's about communications, it's about um, pursuing a goal, you know, having a purpose, existing together. And so I think it's really important for all the Nagas to reflect on where we are at right now, to really seriously and be intentional about our reflection and uh, to make an effort to come together and not just, uh, you know, uh, play the blaming game or uh, wait for others for things to happen. I think we also need to take accountability for what is happening and really work uh, together. Absolutely, very, very uh, aptly said by Dr. Ilan Jamir over there. Uh, you know, Teza Terry, uh, basically, see, initially, initially, the, we, we all thought that the roadblock was because the NSC and IM was insisting on its core demand, quote unquote, of a separate flag and constitution. Uh, now the government of India said, okay, uh, we give you a flag to some extent, you use it only for cultural purposes, uh, but, but it cannot fly alongside the Indian national flag. Uh, so that was the issue. Now, I, we have not heard about that issue and SCN on and off says that yes, we, we cannot compromise on our core demand. There was that special assembly also that was attended by two, three thousand people. They, re they endorsed that demand. Now, we thought that they have gone a step further when on the 14th of January, the two sides resolved this, uh, agreed to work together and collaborate for, for an early solution. But that has not happened. Uh, do you think there are uh, forces which we don't know who are not interested in a solution? Uh, they, do you get the sense or uh, that is not correct? Yeah, NSC and IM to me seems to be very comfortable with the ceasefire and negotiation. And they continue to maintain the status quo. I think we should move out from this comfort zone. We have our aspiration, we have our demands. But it has to be hammered out from the negotiation table unless we call off that table and negotiation. So we have to be pragmatic and come to a realistic, and we must bring this into a logical conclusion. Right, right. On the other side, uh, government of India, it is time for government of India to either make a declaration or come out open to the people and bring this negotiation to a logical conclusion. But at the moment, the peace process is parked on the roadside. There's hardly any peace process. It is just a protocol. It's just a routine work, meeting for just a discussion, meeting hello, hi. I think this cannot go on. They can right. continue to discuss for months together, days together, yes, yes, day yes. to day basis. Uh, yeah, till absolutely. they come out to a conclusion. If government of India feels that both the parties should come together, what is stopping them from calling both the party? I think that is a good point. I think that is a good point. Uh, Mr. K.K. Sema, uh, Tezatari is saying that let the government of India invite formally both the groups and let's see if any group doesn't come to, for the joint meeting. Is, the, is that, a, is that a, an interesting way to deal with the issue? Suppose the government of India extends a formal invitation to the NSC and IM and the NNPGs and, 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 and then wait on that given day. Uh, if somebody doesn't come, then that group who doesn't come has to explain, isn't it? Well, in as far as the elementary that right from the beginning say no we have we have we have a we have a bad we have a bad audio line we have a bad audio we have a we have a bad audio line dr allen uh Teza Terry said that, that interesting thing suppose the government of india extends a formal invitation 
to NSC and IIM and NNPGs. Okay, on so and so date, you please come for a joint discussion. Then wait and watch what happens. Is that uh, a, is that a workable idea? If anybody doesn't come, they owe the people an explanation because they are saying that they are representing the Naga people. Okay, so lot of uh, audio issues. Teza, is, is, is that what you want? Do you think uh, we should try that out? The government of India should try that out? Mr. Terry? Yeah, we cannot expect government of India to take a final call. It is we who should come together we should hammer out our differences and we should go as a common front. But the amount of trust deficit that we are having today is not enabling us to come together. My point is, if they can come together on the invitation of the FNR, they should be able to come together on the invitation of Government of India as well. Okay, let me let me go quickly. If there to are the, any differences, right, right, right. Very interesting point, uh, Doctor Watiyar. We missed you for a few minutes because of the uh, internet connectivity. Now, uh, you know, Doctor Teza Terry is saying that government of India should invite both the groups. Wow, what is holding them back? Now suppose, do you think this is a way out, the government of India extending an invitation to both the NSC and IM and the NNPGs on a given day and wait for them to come? If anybody doesn't come, they owe the people have an explanation as to why they have not, they were unable to come. Yes, uh, yeah. so then I agree with you that they should come together and it should, it should not be delayed. As a matter of fact, we've been talking for this long and uh, the willingness on our part, meaning to say the willingness on the part of the NSA and the NNPG will have to be from within. And this must take, the sooner we come, the sooner we listen to each other and say, let us, we will begin to do, we will begin to achieve something positive. Right, right. Now, what is the way forward now to remove this bottleneck, remove this deadlock? Uh, because you have done a lot of work involved when you were ultimately succeeded in bringing the two sides together. Now, Teza is asking if, if the two sides can come together when the FNR invites, why can't they come together if the government of India were to extend a formal invitation? Dr. Watier. Yeah, uh, I'm not so sure that the government of India has uh, invited both of them together. Not yet. As far as I know, not yet. I, not to my knowledge. But my question is, should the government of India invite both together? Don't you think it is high time? Well, uh, the, the effort should be made from both sides. Efforts should it be made. It has to come from the Nagas themselves as well as the hint has to come from the government of India as well. Now, don't you think that the FNR also has a responsibility because you took a lot of efforts in getting that joint declaration signed. Uh, the, you, you, you took a lot of efforts, in, in, involved a lot of hard work to get that joint statement signed. Now, is the FNR going to ask both the groups as to why you are behaving in this manner? Has the FNR already done so? Uh, well, we have been talking to them individually. We have not made it public. Uh, the fact that they have come to understand that cooperation is the need of the hour. Right. In, in Kolkata, what we said was we need to define unity from a different perspective. Unity is not the way we normally would think. Um, that everybody will come shake their hands and everything will be all right. Yeah. No, that's not as simple as that. But 
what we have said to them was, we must acknowledge the differences among each one. Correct. Uh, I'm acknowledging the differences and say, you 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 are you differ in that area. I differ in this area. But right. Let us cooperate. Right. Right. That's what. Right. And they have agreed to do that. Uh, I'm completely run out of time. Final comments, uh, Mr. K K S M R. Twenty seconds. Final comments. Are you hopeful? I would expect them to call all the factions involved, take the initiative, and bring them together if they want a common solution. Depending on the stakeholder to come together first is an impossible task. But the government of India must bring the factions together and make them iron out the differences. That's all I say. But the final thing that I'd like to say is this. The negotiating teams, whichever it be, NSCGs or NSCNI, they have to be transparent with the stakeholders. They cannot conceal whatever they are talking with the government of India from the stakeholders. And NSCNI must be more transparent in order to gain the trust of the stakeholders. Right. They cannot go like Absolutely. This. Absolutely. Uh, doc, Mr. Sema is calling for transparency of the st stakeholders. Final comments. Uh, Dr. Ellen, final comments from you. 20 seconds. Are you hopeful? Yeah. I'm, yes. Uh, we have to hope. Otherwise, where would we go? You know? And it is my hope that our leaders do what they need to do. I think the people have spoken enough and we are waiting. So... Yes, uh, our prayers are with everyone involved. Absolutely. Uh, the, you know, it's a tricky situation, but uh, today's d d debate, tonight's debate, basically everybody has been, all the esteemed panelists are calling on the two sides should shed their differences, come together, talk to the government of India in one voice, because unless they do so, there cannot be a solution to that very, very uh, long-standing Naga political issue, but this is easier said than done. We know FNR again has a task in hand, but at the same time, there has also been a talk of the common Naga people speaking out. Perhaps a time has come for the, uh, not just the stakeholders or the civil society talking, but the common Nagas, young and old alike, talking and expressing their views on the issue. This is not the last that we have heard on the very, very long-standing Naga issue. We hope an acceptable solution is reached sooner than later. I thank all my panelists for participating in the program and the viewers for watching the show. Good night and goodbye.